The classic 1997 film The Fifth Element features a futuristic weapon demonstrating what warfare might look like in the year 2263. When fired, bullets from the fantastical gun do aerobatic U-turns, curving around the shooter to impact a target behind him. It's all rather silly and is not to be taken seriously. The Fifth Element was, after all, a decidedly tongue-in-cheek science fiction film. Unbelievable! On the other hand, in 1998, just one year after The Fifth Element, Dr. Roland F. Barrett Jr. patented a guided bullet design that's a little science fiction itself. Dr. Barrett's patent describes a bullet that can, using a combination of laser designation and internal guidance systems, make micro-adjustments to its flight path, significantly increasing long-distance accuracy. The bullet certainly can't do abrupt U-turns, but Dr. Barrett was limited by nearly three-decade-old technology. It begs the question as to whether a Fifth Element-style weapon might be possible today, and the short answer is, well, sort of. There are at least two smart bullet or guided bullet programs in development, and one has already delivered pretty remarkable results. The downside is that public information on guided bullet tech is presently a little sparse, given that the field of research is still very cutting edge and so subject to strict military confidentiality. The information that is available, which we'll share with you now, seems to indicate that 2263 was a massive overestimation as to when guided bullets would become reality, which is to say at least one project may have already borne fruit and it isn't even impossible that guided bullets are covertly in production as we speak. First and foremost, by definition, a smart projectile falls into a combination of three categories. A projectile that can alter its trajectory, can alter its speed, or can actively receive or transmit information. Being more specific, a smart bullet is a projectile fired from a traditional gunpowder firearm such as a pistol or assault rifle. Smart missiles, or guided missiles, meanwhile, well, those were developed in the 30s and have been used extensively ever since, and they fall into their own separate category entirely. So with the designations out of the way, let's look at the 1998 guided bullet patent that was light years ahead of its time. It is this pattern that gives us the clearest, most uncensored look at the technology, with the later projects having borrowed rather liberally from Dr. Barrett. Dr. Barrett filed his patent in August 1998, detailing a fiber-optic-linked projectile that is reliant on a separate laser designation system. What makes Dr. Barrett's design fascinating, however, is the means by which the bullet alters its own trajectory. First of all, the guided bullet has three fiber-optic cables equally distributed around the circumference of the projectile, three being the magic number that provides three degrees of potential adjustment. The system, simple but ingeniously, is based around each fiber optic eye receiving an equal amount of light from the designation laser. As long as the light entering each eye is equal, it's assumed that the bullet is on target. A tiny internal guidance system using a lithium polymer battery operates the internal mechanisms that allow fully automated in-flight adjustment. As far as making the adjustments is concerned, Dr. Barrett's design uses a combination of deformable steering surfaces, a deployable flap system, and a series of stabilization fins. According to the patent, the guided bullet utilizes steering control surfaces to rotate the longitudinal axis A of its body out of alignment with the present direction of bullet travel. Thus, the guidance system is capable of generating a correctional signal to the steering control surfaces in response to the sensory input received from the laser sensors to translate the bullet to the optimum trajectory to hit the target. The adjustment flaps, meanwhile, operate in much the same way as those on an aircraft, working in conjunction with tail fins to maintain stability. Most remarkable, according to Dr. Barrett, is that his guided missile is accurate up to 3,000 meters and beyond, with shooters able to theoretically hit targets they can't even see. Using laser designation, it is conceivable that an accomplice may mark the target, perhaps at a separate location kilometers away from the shooter, and that the bullet may be guided to impact with pinpoint accuracy. For context, a skilled sniper not using guided bullets generally operates at between 600 and 1200 meters. It's all very impressive, even more so when you consider the extraordinary effort Dr. Barrett put into understanding airstreams and aerodynamic properties. But keep in mind that Dr. Barrett was a private citizen. He wasn't contracted by the military, so he had no dedicated ballistics lab and lacked much of the necessary ballistics data required for precise calculations. As such, he revealed in an interview that he spent a great deal of time studying butterflies and large game hunting birds, then writing his own from scratch simulations in MathCAD software. So then, with all of this being said, it seems like guided bullets were already cracked in 1998, right? Well, as innovative as Dr. Barrett's work was, there is no mention of the military or any organization expressing interest, at least not publicly. If we were to guess, this is perhaps a case of a design being too far ahead of its time to be practical. 
Keep in mind that everything in the patent is theoretical, with there being nothing to indicate that the bullet ever actually worked or could even exist as a prototype. More to the point, the design probably didn't guarantee the game-changing properties that an organization like the military might be looking for. Dr. Barrett claimed that his bullet is capable of hitting targets at 3,000 meters, but should have added that this is possible, in theory, in a best-case scenario. The reality is that Dr. Barrett's design was mostly suitable for correcting small mistakes, as is stated in the patent itself. A laser-guided bullet capable of satisfactory performance under normal operating conditions, thereby compensating for unknown factors and human operator limitations. Human operator limitations include eyesight resolution, neuromuscular coordination, heartbeat, and respiration-induced motion. So, militaries probably concluded that sinking millions into a guided bullet that could potentially just compensate for respiration-induced motion didn't seem like a wise investment. Besides which, when the US military wants game-changing patents, it tends to just create them via lucrative contracts. In 2008, under DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, the ever-present aerospace and defense manufacturer Lockheed Martin joined forces with Teledyne Scientific and Imaging. The stated goal was to crack the previously deemed impossible task of a true guided bullet, something way beyond Dr. Barrett's design and more akin to the fifth element. As we've mentioned, Exacto is still in development, and much of the relevant information is classified. What we do know is that the Exacto project is allegedly focused on a new 50 caliber BMG rifle with an improved scope and fire and forget technology, fire and forget being in direct contrast to the aforementioned laser designation system. Laser designation requires that the target be continually marked until the projectile impacts, while fire and forget finds the target autonomously once deployed. This is important, given that an operative may be interrupted and may have to evacuate the area after firing, and more prominently because laser targeting systems can be detected and jammed. But if the Exacto system doesn't use laser targeting, what does it use, and how does it work? Well, the short answer is that we don't know. The long answer, according to purposefully confusing information released by Lockheed and Teledyne, is that Exacto utilizes spin-stabilized projectiles, may also utilize a spin-stabilizing system. The project implements internal or external aero-actuation control methods, may use projectile guidance technology, is tamper-proof, the projectile has a small power supply, and the accompanying firearm may make use of advanced sighting technology, including optical resolution and improved clarity. Maybe, or maybe it doesn't. <laughs> Could you be more vague? Yes, it's a powerful word salad, and we have no idea what any of it means either. DARPA has, however, made public two brief but impactful videos that demonstrate without question that the technology works. The first video, from February 2014, shows a bullet purposefully fired off target, only to course correct and hit a bullseye. The second video, released after a phase of refinements and improvements, is from February 2015. In this video, a number of shots are taken at a moving target, first by an expert marksman, then by a person that's allegedly never fired a rifle before. Astoundingly, both the experienced and inexperienced shooters are able to easily hit the moving target. There are also a few publicly available images of Exacto bullets, one in particular showing a 50 caliber round packed with various unidentified electronics. There is no telling if the image is genuine or intended to further confuse rival nations, but notably the pictured bullet doesn't have any stabilization fins as suggested. There is also no explanation as to the purpose of the electronics, the cost of each round hasn't been revealed, and even the cost of the project itself has been kept confidential. The last official announcement for the project was in 2015, with DARPA program lead Jerome Dunn saying, This live fire demonstration from a standard rifle showed that Exacto is able to hit moving and evading targets with extreme accuracy at sniper ranges unachievable with traditional rounds. Fitting Exacto's guidance capabilities into a small 50 caliber size is a major breakthrough and opens the door to what could be possible in future guided projectiles across all calibers. At least that was easy to understand. If there is potentially groundbreaking technology that could change the face of warfare, you can bet that there isn't just a single entity working on it. Enter Sandia National Laboratories, headquartered at Kirtland Air Force Base in New Mexico, plus a dedicated test facility in Hawaii. 
The difference here is that while Lockheed and Teledyne are working under US military contract through the DoD, Sandia is owned by the federal government but is privately managed and operated. And why is that important? Well, because first and foremost, Sandia wasn't beholden to the government when developing its smart bullet and so had been much more forthcoming with information. Second, it's important because the facility intends on making its self-guided bullet commercially available, or at least it intends on doing so if the project ever gets additional funding. In 2012, years before the Exacto project was undergoing its successful test firings, Sandia's self-guided DAR was reportedly already in development. The company announced that their finned projectile was able to successfully hit targets at around 2,000 meters and could be developed cheaply from commercially available parts. The dart, essentially a bullet with fins, is 100 millimeters long and has an optical sensor housed in the nose and can be loaded into and fired from small caliber smoothbore guns. The key aspect of the projectile is the four electromagnetically actuated fins that provide stability and in-flight adjustment similar to Dr. Barrett's design. Also, like Dr. Barrett's design, the guidance mechanics operate using a laser designation system, in this case, a laser attached to the rifle or controlled by a secondary operative. But according to project leads Red Jones and Brian Cast, the major breakthrough is that their guided dart doesn't spin, which, Jones explains on Sandia's website, is a key factor in making an in-flight projectile significantly more agile. He elaborates that the sensor picks up the laser, a small 8-bit onboard processor communicates with the guidance system, and actuators steer the fins with incredible accuracy. Also revealed on the website is that the DART is essentially a miniaturized version of a guided missile, with the main difference coming down to the matter of cost. Jones points out that smart missiles require expensive individual internal measurement units, while the DARTs make do without them, making them significantly more cost-effective. As to how the dart could be so rapidly adjusted over such a short period of time, Jones reveals that the natural body frequency of the darts is 30 Hz. This translates to adjustments being made 30 times per second, providing flexibility to such an extent that a bullet that would otherwise miss a target at 1,000 meters by 9 meters would instead hit with an accuracy of 8 inches. Does this mean, though, that the speed of the bullet is reduced to allow for more in-flight adjustments? Well, not according to Jones, who declares that with commercially available gunpowder, the muzzle velocity of a dart is 2,400 feet a second, that's 730 meters a second, and that even with more potent military-grade gunpowder, there should be no loss in accuracy. And speaking of potent military-grade gunpowder, the only real challenge the team faced was keeping the delicate internal mechanics within each dart safe. A concussive blast could easily cause damage, and that's where the sabot comes in. The sabot being a protective sheath that falls away from the bullet after firing. The sabot can be seen in a video made available by Sandia, and everything certainly seems to be working as intended. But with all of this being very impressive, you've probably already noticed that the original announcement was in 2012, and that the Sandia self-guided dart should already be available. Sadly, as with Dr. Barrett, no organization ever stepped in to further fund development, meaning that the self-guided dart is indefinitely on ice. Even after Sandia outright declared that the primary markets for the product would be very lucrative, including military, law enforcement, and private hunters, there are still no takers. So let's move on to the only other smart bullet project worth mentioning, and this one requires trying to make sense of information coming out of Russia. In a classic case of anything you could do, we could do better, just two years after the Exacto project was announced, Russia stepped forward to declare that they too were developing a self-guided bullet, only theirs was better, because of course it was. According to an interview with Russian publication TASS, the Russian Advanced Research Foundation, in conjunction with the Central Scientific Research Institute of Precision Engineering, were developing a smart bullet capable of hitting targets at up to 10,000 meters. The announcement declared that initial development had already succeeded and the testing phase was likewise showing good results. General Vitaly Davidov said in an interview that, quote, The work in this direction continues. The stages of the product's design and experimental development in an unguided regime have been completed and the guided flight tests have started. Beyond this announcement, though, concrete information on Russia's progress is virtually non-existent. What the results of the tests were or any progress that occurred beyond the tests has not been made public. The next major update we can find, as brief as it is, comes from 2018 via Russian publication Lenta.ru. The extremely brief reference states that the project has been put on hold due to a lack of necessary technology, which seems pretty definitive. The statement is, however, in direct contrast to an earlier 2017 mention by Director of Conventional Weapons, Ammunition, and Special Chemistry, 
Sergei Abramov. Abramov said, conversely, that all was going well with the project and that experimental smart bullets were on schedule to be produced in the 2020s. The lack of concrete information isn't surprising and is certainly by design, especially considering that there is also almost no mention of the Exacto project beyond the successful demonstration in 2015. The Exacto page has even been taken down from the DARPA website, but it's almost certain that the project still exists and may have even gone into production. The original estimated delivery date for Exacto was 2015, after all, so the final product is long overdue. With all of that being said, there is another angle to consider that makes a great deal of sense. With both the US and Russia, there is a chance that neither country had any intention of mass-producing self-guided sniper bullets in the first place. As far as Exacto is concerned, there is an argument to be made that the US was actually producing a proof of concept for upscaled self-guided shells, perhaps for the auto cannons mounted on tanks, ships, and aircraft. Simply put, the US military always considers overall benefit versus cost, and given how little modern warfare relies on individual soldiers these days, it just doesn't make sense to equip units with more expensive smart bullets. Smart autocannon shells, on the other hand, could easily be a deciding factor that changes the outcome of an entire conflict. This doesn't make the self-guided technology any less groundbreaking, but it does officially mean we're no longer talking about smart bullets. As far as Russia is concerned, it's rather telling that a smart artillery shell was reportedly in development just two years following the announced smart bullet, with the projects using very similar technology. According to Representative Alexander Kokin in a 2018 article, once out of the artillery barrel, the new shell will follow an ordinary ballistic flight path most of the time. Near the target, the built-in control system will be activated to correct the trajectory. To adjust the shell's trajectory, options include fins or jet thrusters. Now, we're just speculating on the matter and don't claim to have all the answers, but this theory would explain why mention of the Exacto sniper round has all but vanished. Sandia, on the other hand, seems to be the only party with a genuine intention of making self-guided rounds, but the fact that the company's still looking for funding over a decade later, pretty damning. It looks like our fifth element fantasies have more or less been dashed. Thank you for watching.